Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And we are back. Yeah, actually, I always try to turn those mics on early so she can catch her saying stuff. Is that everyone's watching that? Everyone's watching catch us in the middle of a good conversation <laughs> right there. Much. You know, and you know what we always talk about is we need to record during the break, actually, because we have some great conversations during some the break. Some of the... The yes. breaks. Not all yeah. the breaks. Not all of them, yes. <laughs> all of them, yeah. I agree there sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, we have the Kink team. We have Bruce and Diane Kink. And, you know, now we're going to switch over a little bit to Bruce, and we're going to have Diane still interject anytime you want to, by you the bet. way. But yeah, this is the Kink show. She today. always it's does. It's the Kink show. That it's is the correct. the very best of the Kinks. It is the best of the Kinks. That is correct. You know, and we so. We have a DVD. Yes. That, you even have a DVD for it. <laughs> On but, sale. Yeah, uh, that's just nine ninety five. And right. if, you, if you do it now, <laughs> yes. we'll give you two. We'll give you two for the price All of one. All you pay the extra shipping. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. But you know, Bruce, we heard from your lovely wife in regards to how she got involved in the business. Let's hear a little bit about your story. So going back nineteen ninety four, it was Continental Airlines that brought me out here with the regional division. So I came out in corporate communications and marketing and worked for them ten years. And literally, when I saw Diane join Keller Williams, we started going. I started going to some of her functions, and the energy, and the excitement, and the training, and the everything. I was going back to Continental, going, "These guys have really got some good programs." And literally, after nine eleven, the airline industry changed a little bit. My passion was still sales, marketing, and that type of thing. And we kind of made a commitment. We actually spent about two years deciding whether or not, as a husband and wife team, we were going to do this together. Uh, we actually traveled around and met with other, you know, very high-producing husband and wife teams and realized it could be an extremely successful business as long as you could clearly identify what your roles were going to be. Right. So in 1994, I came. In 2004, 2004, 10 years to the day, I joined Diane uh, on the King team, and she had built just a brill- you know, brilliant business. And my, really, my passion was the operations, the sales, the marketing, that side of it. Right. Diane had a brilliance with the listings and the sales and working that side of the business. And so we really dug into – the models and systems, because I literally came out of an airline industry in which it was all about model systems training, really understanding how you were going well, to operate. Keller Williams right? is a perfect fit for you. <laughs> well, it was. <laughs> and in fact, um, Rob, you mentioned earlier, you know, Gary on his new book, The One Thing, he talks about success. It's sequential. It's not simultaneous. And so he says, really, find that training class that will help knock something out to where it becomes easier or unnecessary, and then knock that domino over, go to the next domino, and over time, sequentially, you will build and have huge success. And so the other piece of it was leverage, right? right. So we realized if we leveraged ourselves acro- you know, accordingly, we could have a phenomenal business. So, And then he turns around and takes this little part-time job as team leader for the <laughs> Metropolitan <laughs> Keller Wins, right. which only has 400 and some odd agents. So <laughs> We just got 480, but we're doing all right. 480. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, and how'd that transition go? I mean, that was one of the things Rob was talking about. I think that's a great, you know, you obviously you joined Diane. You, you, you guys have an incredible team that you built. And then you transitioned from, a, from an operations perspective over to the Met. So, so really what we talk about to agents, even to the people that work with us, is that if you can build a business and a life that you want, right, right. predicated on what you put before you and your goals, part of it was we were being taught how to leverage, how to create passive income, how to grow. So one of the things our model and system taught us was to build a phenomenal team of which Diane has done just an incredible job. And then I was able to step out of it to diversify and then take over into a leadership role, first um, at the Woodlands office and then taking over the Kellams Metropolitan. Next step after that, through additional training, coaching, and consulting was how do you want to get into ownership? How do you want to get into additional leadership? So right. each of these steps was based on a formula and a, and a model and system that said learn, leverage, backfill with brilliant people, and move to the next level. Yeah. And, then, and, of course, I remember some of the teachings, because I, I did uh, train with Keller Williams, is that uh, go-stop type of thing. You, red light, green light. Red light, green light. Right. Yeah. And so <laughs> you, you move forward and say, like, well, you know, we've got the team built, and, it, and it's doing well on its own, and now I can go on to other things. And what I see some agents making errors is they're trying to go on to the next step when they hadn't really finished the first step. Yeah, part of that is learning a mastery, but it's also understanding – and I don't care what business you're in, you have a gift zone. You have a gift right. of what you're good at, and yet what we find is people trying to do something that someone else is gifted at. For instance, we sit here in the studio, and this young lady across from us right here has an incredible gift behind that terminal. I couldn't get over there and do what she does. So you leverage through the people that you work with in order to have bigger success, and you surround yourself with brilliant people that can do the things that you you could learn, but it's not your gift zone. Right. I, I like that. You know, One of the things I tell everybody all the time 
you know, when I, before I got into the real estate business on the mortgage side, you know, I was, I was in the consulting arena. And one of the things I was able to do is bring over in my business as well all the items that I, that I learned in regards to cost and affordability analysis, a lot sure. about tar costing, et cetera. And I love to hear stories of other individuals who came from outside businesses, from other industries, because a lot of times the biggest changes we're going to see in our own industry is the industry changes we bring from outside. It's the outsiders who come in mm-hmm. and then are able to continue to work not only within those, within those parameters that are, that are developed, but create new ones going forward. And we see that all the time. I always say to people, and I'm holding up my iPhone, this evolution right here, right, is changing all businesses. Yes. But certainly in real estate, what we realize is that we have to adapt and change and keep training and keep understanding as things change and adapt. We have to keep ahead of the trends, but then there will be some things that maybe I'm not as proficient at. I'm going to bring somebody in who knows it. Right. So I want to surround myself with people who know that better than I do, and I have the questions that I need answers to. They'll provide the answers. You know, one of the things we we talk about, and I was going to ask you this question, you know, we talk about how technology, and one of the things was Bruce, because we're on radio, we can't actually see what we're holding up sometimes, but we're holding up our cell phones, right? And so we've seen technology has created this wonderful ability to get access to data immediately. But it's also created some bad habits in which individuals are now using technology and replacing it with the human touch and feel in some cases. And and what I tell her, uh, texting is what mm. Diane just now said. So, you know, one of the things that, that I want to talk about is, you know, there's a happy medium that has to be done when it comes to not only leveraging technology for what it can do, but also going back to tried and true ways that have always been very successful, which is the face-to-face, the handshake, always. the physical aspect of things. H- how do you talk to your agents about that? Two issues. Number one, and again, we talked about this earlier. I, I don't believe in the 24-7 agent because I think what you do then is you're teaching and training your client to mistreat you. What I believe in is you follow a schedule. Ladies, if you're out there and you want to go see your doctor, you don't call up and go, hey, I'm coming in at 930. You're going to see me. The right. doctor says, no, my next available appointment is X. Now, I get it in real estate. There's times you have to be able to respond through technology, but you work it around your calendar and schedule. The second thing I talk about is, and in fact, Rob, you and I were touching on earlier, legal and ethics and otherwise. We're realizing that the text is not going to be upheld, right? You have to have physical either email, time, date, stamp, or face-to-face where you then put it in writing. Right. So there's two points to this where, one, nothing trumps face-to-face. Nothing trumps the eye-to-eye conversation ever. Gary Keller to this day will tell you he will beat any agent out there knocking on a door and going face-to-face and creating relationship and then finding out how do you want to be best communicated to. If you want to be text, exactly great. But then what you state in our business is that anything that has to do with contracts or anything else, we're going to do it in writing with a date and time stamp so we have record of it. Right. And there are some nuances out there. They've they've actually had some court cases where uh, email actually enjoined somebody in an agreement because the principal was was CC'd on the email. And, of course, they found in favor and they said that met the statutes of fraud and therefore – was valid. Oh, yeah. So wow. you got to be careful with electronic <laughs> transmissions out yes. there. You definitely well, you do. sure do. And, and, and Diane, the, you wanted to say something well, the, as well. The tone on texting, sometimes you don't hear tone. I mean, you do with words, but sometimes the tone um, is misunderstood. And so the texting world, I think, has gone a little crazy. And so just pick up the phone and talk. I, mean, I don't always put a smiley face after everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Exactly. Exactly. Thumbs up. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm happy. Right. I'm, I'm not happy. Right. Yeah, but it is a exactly. quick way to catch me, you know, but, but um, it's a quick way to catch busy people for quick notes. But I think to, to just have long communication, it's difficult to do that uh, with text. And the tone is across all mediums as well. True. You can get that tone in email. You can get that tone uh, even on a voicemail. I mean, it could be you're leaving something really fast, you just want somebody to know, and somebody gets that voicemail and says, whoa, he or she was extremely mad, or I didn't like the way that tone was, right? Yeah, so, note to so, self, right. all caps yeah. normally mean I'm screaming <laughs> at you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it, Thank you very much. <laughs> it, it's like one thing, is it, there's going to be some changes, or there's going to be some changes around here. Right. right. I mean, right. <laughs> Which way do you take that? Right. Yeah, so it's yeah, tone is very very important. So, uh, so well, you. But you, one other item, the thing we do understand now about technology, right? When we now look at online systems in which we can wet signature on an iPhone or on a Droid, when we can send contracts, when we can do all that, it does change our ability to communicate and do business with clients. Right. But again, I think when it comes back to it, when you're going through the relational piece of it or putting together that deal. Nothing trumps, again, as Diane said, picking up that phone, clearly articulating and understanding what they want, and then presenting it in writing where both sides can yeah. then have something to work Well, with. you know, Christina Wise out of Austin, who was the Keller Williams team, and she basically said to the whole team, uh, you're going to have an iPad, and that's all you're going to have, and everything's done on that iPad and stuff like that. So that's that's the new uh, real estate. So. Sure. It sure is.
Yeah, yeah, and I would I would agree. You know, one of the things I do say though, I say this, is, is, it's and, and this goes for all real estate professionals. I will win ninety percent of every deal that I am face to face with, mm-hmm. and I will probably win only ten percent of the deals who call me up and want to know what their rate is on the phone or on the internet, mm-hmm. right? Because if that's the only deciding factor, mm-hmm. which is what's your commission going to be to me, or how much are you going to discount it to me, or what's your rate going to be, except whatever you know portion of the market you're in. That's what you're going to end up getting is in regards to service. So that's why I tell everybody the face-to-face to me is still, and I like what you said, Bruce, is then you can decipher. Once you get to meet that person, you find out how do they want to be communicated mm-hmm. with, what mechanisms are best for them, what hours are best for them, and you can set the schedule that best works for both sides. Well, the old adage, they don't care how much you know, or they you know, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. They, right. You don't get that in a, you know, a 14-character text. Right. True. No, <laughs> true. No, exactly that. And you t- talked about something about a uh, minute about – discount and things like that is that right that was a constant conversation with agents and i'm sure you probably have in your office with 480 i'm sure you've had this conversation sure my client wants me to to cut my commission all that stuff um and i think when people do that they don't realize the value of what we bring to the table right we go back to value proposition what value are bringing in what script and dialogue are you using in order to get what you're truly worth because there are so many steps in a real estate transaction that when you really lay it all out and tell them how you are going to have a fiduciary responsibility to them, it, there's a lot of value in what we bring to the table. Well, contract to close is probably the hardest part. You know, we may be quick to get in contract because the market's hot, but boy, getting into closing is a lot of work <laughs> well, most well, of the time. I was teaching a class the other day, and this woman said she had shown uh, or basically made offers on about 20 houses for one set of clients. So Ouch. I'm thinking I'm thinking that it's not that easy to get under contract <laughs> right now because of yeah. multiple offers. And things That's like true. That. Well, That's true. And I also think that a lot of times when you're looking at that, when someone wants to discount a commission, what you said earlier today is there's P&L that goes in. N- most people forget a real estate agent is not earning that full amount, Absolutely. whatever that dollar amount is. No. It goes towards expenses, towards employees, towards marketing dollars, et cetera. So my question is if I can't do all those things for you, I'm not going to be able to get you the best available service of what you're expecting out of me. Plus, it's Correct. entirely a contingent thing. Yes, I would unless absolutely we, agree. Unless we perform it. it we don't happen. get paid until we end yep. up at closing. Are you pointing at the clock? I'm pointing at the clock like, again because I break? just got the notice that we're going to go up against a break again. Can you believe it? Yes. I know. You know, <laughs> I know. Goes. But, you know, time flies when you're having fun. We're going to get a break right now. We're going to be right back with Bruce and Diane Kink. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I won't dance. Don't ask me. I won't dance, don't ask me, I won't dance, madam, with you. My heart won't let my feet do things that they should do. You know what? You're lovely. 